I pledge my head to clear thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my, my hands to larger service, service, my health to better living, for my club, my community, my country, and my world. What are you going to do at your next meeting? Next meeting, I give you the pledge. 4-H members have been pledging themselves to better living for many years. How did 4-H get started? Why has it been so successful? How is it the same or different now? Back in the 1890s, Iowa State College started taking the college to the people with corn trains and short courses. At the same time, county superintendents of one-room schools thought boys and girls should be involved in activities in addition to school programs. One of them was a, a woman named Jessie Fields, later to be called Jessie Fields Shambar. And she uh, taught uh, cooking and sewing and even raising corn. And many of the superintendents that wrote Iowa State and said, can you send us information? The college not only sent information, it sent a professor. Professor Holden again went down and had a summer school with all the rural school teachers in Page County. He talked about all the different things that they could teach including home ec. It wasn't just agriculture. And so uh, that was significant. The groundswell of educational efforts in the early 1900s led Iowa State College to establish an extension service with county support. 4-H was also taking shape in other states across the nation and eventually around the world. Clubs were formed for boys and girls to appreciate their immediate environments and the opportunities it offered. The environment has changed from rural agriculture and now includes members in urban areas and projects suitable for today. 4-H is an organization concerned with the wholeness of youth and it's directly linked with university extension. 4-H is successful due to the commitment of parents, leaders, donors, and the community. My first year of 4-H, my projects were flowers, clothing, and livestock. Project work is the starting place for 4-H'ers. Most youngsters sign up for 4-H when in fourth grade and select one or more projects. Like members, pre-4-H'ers, called Clover Kids, prepare an exhibit for the county fair. Neighborhood clubs provide 4-H'ers with a sense of belonging, and each club develops its own traditions and expectations. I started as a Jersey 4-H uh, club member and I charter member of the uh, Red Rustlers 4-H Club in, in um, Floyd County. And um, that was the beginning of 4-H for me. Youngsters sign up for projects according to their interests. When members stay with the project throughout their 4-H years, the record book shows evidence of their growth, whether in projects of foods, market lambs, gardening, or dog obedience. Project exhibits are judged at the county fair and members receive placement ribbons. Those who excel in a project may be recognized at county awards night or receive state and national awards or 4-H scholarships. And for some, their project interest expands into a career. Members also sign up for projects to try something new. Whatever the project, Extension provides up-to-date research-based materials to club members that are also helpful to parents and leaders. For many years, boys' clubs focused mainly on agriculture and girls' clubs on home and visual arts. Changing times brought new projects such as victory gardens and rocket science. 4-H made a gradual change from rural youth to include urban youngsters. In the 80s and 90s, boys' and girls' clubs merged as members diversified their projects. More recently, countywide project clubs are being formed such as in photography, shooting sports, and pet therapy. Through their project work, members learn valuable living skills. Here are some photos of me giving uh, my presentation at our county communication contest. It's an opportunity for the youth to organize their thoughts in an educational presentation they organize the subject matter. They have a tricky little introduction that gets everyone attention. They squeeze in the body of all the important facts the public needs to know. And at the end, they 
to a conclusion to tell them what they've already told them. There are plenty of opportunities for members to give presentations beyond their own clubs. Some 4-H'ers involve the audience in working exhibits. They invite the public to come up and learn from them. We've had anything from rope making to making some delicious snacks. Members can also communicate by capturing your attention through photos and visual arts. The one who's doing this video, he's made a career out of his interest in photography and his communication projects in 4-H. 4-H'ers gain confidence through communication activities. When 4-H started in schools over 100 years ago, members learned the latest farm and home practices from their teachers. And parents learned these new practices from their sons and daughters. In the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, communications expanded to include dress reviews, judging contests, store window displays, and communication contests. By the 1990s, 4-H'ers began using computer-generated posters and presentations. 4-H'ers now communicate with cell phones and depend on GPS. Undoubtedly, there will be new technologies and devices to assist 4-H'ers in the future. Still, the confidence-building experience of standing before a crowd to communicate a story is a vital part of the growth and development of 4-H'ers. 4-H offers youth the opportunity to practice their communication in writing and in verbal and written skills by giving them an opportunity to present information to other like service clubs. They might need information for a report for school. I've had many a teacher tell me that she can spot a 4 h in the room from their polished reports, from their ease in communicating and in their presentations they do in the classroom. I joined because my mom and dad were in it, my sisters were in it, almost our entire family have been in 4-H. The very first leadership skill that a young person gains in 4-H is when they join because they made a decision. So decision making is one of the keys of leadership development. From the beginning of 4-H, members made many decisions regarding which projects to carry and what to exhibit. Members set goals, make plans, keep records, and often explain what they learned to a judge, all useful life skills. As one 4-H alum, now an investment executive, indicates, Goal setting was a very big uh, part of, of what I learned from 4-H. Anybody recognize this? A goal card, right? Well, do you anybody remember the three things that we had to put on a goal card? Think what you wanted to achieve, how you were going to do it. Oh, I see someone working on goal cards right now, right? And then when you were done, what you learned, how you would do things differently. Well, frankly, this is a business plan. This is no different than a business plan. When you're working on a project, when you're working on uh, a company, you're doing the same thing. What is my mission? What is my vision? How am I going to accomplish this? And then at the end of the year, how did we do? How did we succeed? And I'd also maintain that a record book isn't really all that different than an annual report. These are really just tools that we learn in 4-H that are very, very applicable to what we do in the business world. As 4-Hers learn by doing, they also gain leadership skills by learning how to work with younger and older members. Older members have opportunities to learn leadership in the county and state programs. The thing that really identifies a leader is this caring concern they have for the people that, are, uh, that they're shepherding and the fact that they are responsible and they have in their heart a concern for the growth of people and a growth of, for the community. Volunteers contribute their time energy and expertise to help 4-H'ers build life skills. Extension personnel provide training to the volunteer leaders knowing they have a great impact on 4-H'ers. I've been involved probably for at least 25 years. My primary role at that time was to help guide and direct the 4-H program in this county and to involve leaders and kids in lots of educational activities. Leadership, like communication and citizenship, has been a part of the 4-H experience throughout the years and is a vital part of youth development. Well, helping uh, youth and adults uh, gain skills in, in leadership and skills in general 
is what education is all about. All Community Service Project this year was planting flowers around the 4-H grounds. Citizenship is one of the major life skills that is taught in the 4-H program. The meaning of citizenship for me is um, informed concern for myself and for others. Citizenship begins with yourself and then goes on to others. It relates to your home, to your peers, to your community, to your state and your nation. While leadership centers on a member acquiring leadership skills, citizenship relates to the member's attitude, behavior, and service to make his or her community a better place. They have done roadside pickups. And I remember uh, one time when the 4-H'ers went to voting precincts and counted the votes and called them in to, um, and that was a very good citizenship project for them, a real learning experience for them. Understanding government and the role of citizens is an important part of the citizenship project. The citizenship short course to Washington, D.C. is sort of a culmination for 4-H'ers after they have done things in their communities. Members stay at the National 4-H Club Center, participate in workshops, and network with 4-H'ers from other states. They go on Capitol Hill for a day and um, meet with their senators and representatives, tour the Capitol, uh, visit the House and Senate rooms, and uh, it's just a very, very exciting time for them. One outgrowth of the Citizenship Washington focus trip. We had a very well-known attorney in Nevada by the name of Mr. John Hattery, who especially liked youth, and he was very anxious to help them uh, teach them and do things that would inspire them to become good citizens. Mr. Hattery was responsible for initiating the Inspiration Night that continues as a kickoff before the county fair. The first speaker was Colonel James Irwin, one of the first astronauts on the moon, who drew a huge crowd. 4-H'ers had the opportunity to help plan the events and to host such well-known persons as Rosie Greer, Simon Estes, and Molly Cooney. The focus on citizenship truly extends the 4-H pledge to my club, my community, my country, and my world. I think 4-H is a lot of fun. Me too! Young people want to be a part of a group to actively participate and be proud of their club. They want to have a good time and make new friends. I think that any 12 or 13 year old would want to be involved with other kids his age or her age and they are going to see all the fun things that go on at the, at the county level and the state level and area level and the local club. When 4-H started in the early 1900s, the rural youth had very little leisure time. They looked forward to 4-H meetings with organized recreation. Recreation not only energized the meetings, it provided learning how to win, how to lose, teamwork, and cooperation. In Iowa, members, businesses, and individuals raised funds for the state 4-H camp. Nature hikes, swimming, crafts, flag raising, singing, circle games, fighting mosquitoes, and getting sunburned were all a part of the 4-H camp in the early years. Now there are horse camps, moonlight hikes to spot wildlife, whole family camps, and other appealing special camps. County Fair is fun. 4-H'ers learn to compete, see all the exhibits, keep the barns clean, eat at the Builders Club stand, and wouldn't miss the fair dance. Some clubs plan special activities such as going to the state fair, fishing trips, roller skating, or making cider. They take ski trips, participate in neighborhood parades, and deliver cakes to leaders and extension staff. All fun activities. Fundraising can also be a fun activity. Back in the 1980s, 600 Story County 4-H'ers worked at the Farm Progress Show to earn money to build the Story County Extension Office. For many years, one club has been cutting, loading, and delivering firewood 
and serving pancake breakfasts as fundraisers to build an amphitheater in a local park. Community service is usually a fun activity, too, as was the case of one club that received a grant from the Story County 4-H Foundation and installed a barn quilt at the fairgrounds. We can look at all the benefits of 4-H in the lives of young people, but most importantly, 4-H is fun. I think 4-H is so successful because you get along by touching things. I think it's successful because you get to volunteer more and you can take it throughout the rest of your life. You know, the thing that I love about 4-H is because it brings families together and it also enables you to make lifelong friends. In a recent study of 4-H by Tufts University, 4-H youth rated higher than other youths in competence, confidence, character, connection with others, and caring about others. Ask 4-H'ers why 4-H is successful, and they'll have several different answers. 4-H is fun, to do things with friends, to meet girls, to win ribbons, to camp out at the county fair. Ask parents why 4-H is successful, and they say for kids to build confidence, to be responsible, to participate in a group, to work with adults, and to excel outside of school. Ask volunteer leaders and extension staff why 4-H is successful, and here are some of their responses. 4-H is successful because of the support of the parents, the extension staff, and extension service itself. The success of 4-H program to me is the fact that uh, we've had this large cadre of volunteer 4-H leaders. They were willing to give so much time and effort to help encourage young people. I think the thing that makes 4-H so special to me are the people that we work with. That's a hands-on every day, and it's so rewarding to see a young person overcome a problem and help them solve that problem. What we need to do is to build in the hearts, build in the lives of children, skills that are going to last them for a lifetime. What has made 4-H uh, successful as a youth program? In my opinion, it is our capacity and willingness to adopt and adapt to new situations, new technology. Where does this come from? As far as I'm concerned, it comes from the fact that we are part of the land grant university system and its research base. Ask individuals or businesses in the community what makes 4-H successful, and they'll attest that 4-H has evolved to meet changes in society, that volunteers provide leadership, and the extension service guides the program. But most importantly, 4-H builds character, capabilities, and self-confidence in young citizens who will be tomorrow's community leaders.